Mazda changed their roof rack design for 2017, so I'm going to show you how that works. Side rails first. Let's see what's in the box. Okay, here we go. Next step, let's take a glance at the instructions. And here are the parts. I've laid them out symmetrically. We have the plugs in the middle that fill the holes in the rails, some pads, some mounting brackets, and some screws with Loctite pre-applied. Should be great. All right, the first thing they say is get your CX-5 roof molding removal tool. So I looked that up and it turns out your removal tool is a screwdriver wrapped in tape. So here we go. Okay, that was easier than I thought. It's a little grungy in this channel, so here's my big chance to clean it out before I install the new brackets. Beauty. I'm putting in the spacers and packing, and I'll tell you, their little Xerox of instructions is terribly grainy. You really can't see what you're supposed to do here too well. But it looks like we'll put the packing in here, and then we'll put in the spacer so that the longer tab faces the outside of the car. They say there's only one way this can go in right. Okay, here's my right-hand roof rail. You can tell it's the right one by the sticker they put on the bottom. Now I've seated the roof rack on top of the brackets with the holes in the rack lining up with the holes in the brackets. Now I'll give it a little shake just to make sure that it's seated on top of these mounting brackets. Here's how it looks at the front. They caution you to make sure that this rubber trim does not overlap the windshield. And here we are looking down through one of the holes in the top of the side rail showing how the hole here lines up with the hole in the mounting bracket beneath it. I'm going to tease the um, moldings apart here so that the roof rack seal does not overlap the windshield seal. There we go, much better. Now the instructions go on about making sure the holes are lined up, so I'm taking the blunt end of a drill bit, making sure that I can run this down into the threaded hole on the inside of this, so that when I put the bolts in, everything will line up nicely. Screws into the, that hold down the side rails. And there's two ways we can go with this. And the first one involves duct tape because there's a um, slot we have to put this down into. And if I don't hold the screw to the driver somehow, it's gonna fall down and rattle around and give me a pain in the ass. So I'm duct taping the screw onto the driver. Go, turning it in, no problem. Turn it into the end loosely and back it off a turn so that I can still move this rack around and get it seated right before I screw down all these screws for good. Now the duct tape gets old fast, so here's another way we can go. I got the proper size bit, a T30, and a magnetic handle, which unsurprisingly doesn't itself come with a T30 bit. But we're good to go now. Check it out. It's easy to get them cross-threaded, and I found it helped if I pull out on the rack as I start them to help the holes line up so they don't get cross-threaded. Well, I checked it. It all looks good. It seems to be in the right place. I'm going to tighten it down from the front to the back. Too tight. Now we're going to fill in these holes with the caps. I unwrapped them. They're all the same. Should be six of them for each side. There it's in the wrong way. There it is the right way. The push. I'm not totally happy about the way this first one went in, but there's a way to get it back out. I'll stick a pin in here, lever it a little bit, and that will release it. And we'll give it another go. Okay, I think we're good now. Last side, when it comes to getting this molding out, it helps to get it started by pushing it back. We'll expose a little gap where we can get the screwdriver in. Yeah.
Now I'm putting the spacers on the left side of the car. And there's a little rubber gasket thing. I put this in again with the long tab facing the outside of the car. Just like that. Place. Here's a view of the side rail alongside the installation channel. And I'm using this taped up drill bit, blunt end in to make sure the holes are lined up here and here and so on before I put the screws in. Now before I tighten down the left hand roof rail, let's take a look at these crossbars. Here's what we get in the box. Front and rear crossbars. The end brackets are pre-mounted, notwithstanding what the instructions said, so that's great. And then we have some isolator pads, they all seem identical, and some bolts and a free Allen wrench. Here's how we tell which is front and rear and left and right. Let's try and get some light on that. There, FR. Here we are with the isolator pad. I put this in place loosely. See how the holes in the brackets fit around the mounting holes here. No screws in there yet. Put the rear bar in place. You can see which way it goes. The rear edge of the bracket slopes more than the front edge. And the crossbar is a little blunter on the forward edge, like an airplane wing. them off by hand so I don't overdo it. Okay, here we go with the trim pieces. Each one clicks twice. Far so good. The crossbars are still loose. All I have to do now is put the bolts in that hold them in place. You don't normally have to put the crossbars in before you tighten the rails, but since I was doing both at the same time, I figured I would. These crossbar bolts are a real pain to put in. I'm going to use a magnetic hand screwdriver and I put down a pad because I'm working in tight quarters here and I don't want to scratch the finish. Maybe you can see the hole where we have to get this in inside of here. Here's a good view of the right-hand side before I put the screws in. Here's another way we can go with these nuisance screws. I've got a right-angle drive in the drill. I'm going to get it started and turned in loosely using that. Now we're going to finish them up by hand using the Torx wrench that they provide. This will take a while. Well, it's all tightened down and ready to go. Next step, cargo box. That'll be a separate video. When I was shopping, cargo boxes for this car. I'd have a hell of a time finding out what the dimensions were of the rack. So you can see here that the center of the rear crossbar is about 22 inches in front of the hatch when you lift it up. Obviously the shape of the cargo box is going to have some effect on this, but it gives you a rough idea. Here's another dimension. The crossbars are roughly 28 inches apart on center. 